Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Global Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to test out a remodeled version of the Orion carrier plane that I use most prominently in my To Mars and Beyond series. And considering how much I use it in that, it is the only first stage I get to use, it seemed like a good idea to spruce it up a bit. And especially to remove the Pan Am logo that is normally on the side of it that has been removed. Uh, improve the tiles since I have better tile textures now and so it's looking much better and make independent wings uh, previously used B9 procedural wings I have decided to not only make the wings for this but also make the control surfaces so we have the control surfaces and we have vertical stabilizer body flap and rudder so I did a lot of work making sure that those will theoretically work the way they should you know controlling the right way and everything and We'll have to see whether it works. I have not test launched it yet. The engines are still the same though. I do have an idea for replacing the Raptors with engines that are more suited to this. The purpose of Raptors, Raptors have this high chamber pressure and so they're very small, but we don't really need that for the Orion carrier plane. We can go with a lower chamber pressure and hopefully that would help like reusability or check out or whatever. And so, yeah, we have space in the back, you see. it's uh, Even if they gimbal, it doesn't need to be this far apart and the reason for that is of course Raptor they all have to cluster on a very tight super heavy base and that's why they have to get the high chamber pressure to get enough thrust but this Orion carrier plane has sort of a different shape than super heavy it's very 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 long and relatively thin in the front uh, so the fact that it's thin in the front instead of a full cylinder means that it's fatter in the back and uh, so relative to the launch uh, mass, it has more space in the back. Okay, so yeah, I'll think about redoing those engines and creating a Rex engine for after Tyrannosaurus Rex because Tyrannosaurus Rexes are larger than Raptors. But basically the same idea, uh, methane engines. The thing is, you'll note that the wings look a lot like the procedural wings, don't they? And so even though I did remodel them, I decided to make them as close to the original as possible because, after all, we don't want to change the aerodynamics of this at all. It works so well that any change to the aerodynamics is going to be a problem. It just does what it does so wonderfully and reliably that I don't want to mess with it. So it is the original, except that the body is uh, still the new body because we uh, just swapped out the model and the textures. So the body is still a new body, but the these procedural wings are here and what you'll note here is that it has a lot of information on the B9 procedural wings. It has the average cord, the semi-span which is just the actual span of that piece, uh, the mid-cord sweep which is just how far swept back it is, the taper ratio which is the ratio between the length at the root and the length at the tip, and the current wing mass. So it has all this information here and that is the exact information, except for wing mass, that's automatically calculated. Uh, that's the exact information you need to put into the FAR aerodynamic module that's in the configuration file for the wings. Now, there is a quirk to this in that there are two separate wing parts. There's this one, and then there's this one, because B9 procedural wings, you can't have uh, sort of a kink in it like that. So there's two wing parts, so I made two wing parts. And uh, this bit was a little bit awkward, obviously, I touched that up in the subsequent model, but these have the information as well. You can see the control surfaces all have the information, and so we can use that to make it very accurate, and also to, that's the stuff for the configuration file, but then to make sure that it's physically the same, we can just use the information here. We have the length, width, tip, you know, all the business and thickness. So I made everything as exactly the same as I could, like two to centimeter. And we will see how that works. Uh, so I've made every effort to make sure that this is not changed. It's carrying an NTP tank as uh, it will often do in my To Mars and Beyond series. So yeah, and also, it's uh, got the tail number. That's a design number, 773. I decided uh, to go with a convention of uh, using numbers that can be turned easily into Japanese names. So the design number for the Orion carrier plane is 773. 
and that equates to Nanami. So that's why it gets the name Nanami up front because I decided that that would be nice. Anyway, so let us test launch it and see if it can glide back down. We're launching from uh, Boca Chica. I might relocate eventually, but uh, yeah, for now, Boca Chica, we have the scenery and also it's just the right distance from Cape Canaveral, so that's hard to beat. I really need to find two different sites, so anywhere else, uh, two different sites that could be used would be great, but I haven't found any. So anyway, okay, so I mean it basically looks the same out on the pad as you would expect, and let's just hope it operates the same. I mean, far is far, so I don't know, uh, if I get all the numbers the same, oh wait, we've got liquid fuel. Uh, it wasn't supposed to have fuel at all. That was accidentally copying. Shoot. Okay, let me go and fix that. Uh, I copied another part. I forgot to remove the liquid fuel from that part when I was copying the configuration. Uh, in fact, uh, the configuration for this was based on the SR-71 wing out of all things. But anyway, long story. I'll fix that. Okay, I fixed the file, but I didn't want to replace the wings on this because the control surfaces are a little bit finicky to place. So we'll just have the empty liquid fuel tanks here. And that shouldn't change anything as far as the testing is concerned. So throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. So to get to Cape Canaveral, we'll need a heading of 75 and that roll. I believe it probably has somewhat less lag because B9 procedural wings being procedural, they always create a little bit more lag. They have a lot of information in the save file and a lot of information that needs to be tracked compared to set parts like this. So we are past the speed of sound. We do not have the jet engines fitted on here, it is without those, but this can have jet engines just in case. Those will be necessary for a ferry back from Cape Canaveral to Brownsville. Seems I've gone a little bit shallower than usual. Okay, cutting off some engines and rolling. Okay, well, I, I needed to have shut down by... I, it usually changes to orbital velocity a little bit earlier. We needed to shut down by 4,000, not this much, but... Alright, let's just try it, but... Uh, we'll probably be overshooting like this. Yeah, not that we don't have enough RCS fuel to get back, it's just that we're likely to overshoot like this. And I don't know how well it's gonna take it slamming back down at a higher speed. We'll see. Yeah, since it doesn't share the Orion carrier, uh, Orion space plane textures anymore, uh, the body textures generally look good. The patchiness is deliberate here, by the way. Let's give it some character. The wing pieces are a little bit light, though. I wonder... I think I did not put the textures unlimited effect on them, so maybe I need to do that. They're very much looking like the procedural wings right now, even though they aren't. Oh well. Trying to convince the game that they're exactly the same, darn it. So obviously if it works, this will be a very simple and short video. Uh, but trust me, it took a while to get all this right. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, we are back in the atmosphere. It's maxing out roll for some reason. That's uh, not good. Uh, it's probably shouldn't be forced nose down here. But we'll see how it does. It's doing worse than before. Oh shoot.
Well, this is obviously not going to be easy, is it? Okay. Right. Um Yeah, this is this has just gone all pear shaped now. <laughs> uh okay, 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 okay. Well, I'm gonna have to well see now I've put the fire aerodynamic model on exactly the same, so now what do I do? Is the question. But we were going too fast. Let me at least get the textures unlimited on the wing surfaces first. And then let's try one more time, a coming in a little bit slower. Okay, so I have changed a few things. I made sure to put Textures Unlimited on. I did swap out the intersection of the wings so we don't have the liquid fuel showing up anymore. I changed the actuation levels on the control surfaces a bit. I hope it isn't the fact that the control surfaces are not properly placed in unity or something like that because I'm not sure uh, they're, they're turning right I mean uh, given their functions uh, so ailerons and rudder I've checked that uh, so they're doing what they're supposed to do in terms of where they are versus the center of mass but yeah we'll have to see everything else checks out so I don't know SAS on throttle is up ignition launch. Maybe it was just that we were going too fast. After all, there's a reason why the 4,000 meter per second limit exists. So if I could have gotten it to go faster than that and still be recoverable, I would have. So yeah. This time we'll have to go steeper than last time. We were also too shallow. Originally, the Orion carrier plane was designed with a larger wing and also four vertical stabilizers. But I decided I could do without the larger wing and the extra two vertical stabilizers. Uh, those were based on what Far had told me about the Orion carrier plane. And I decided that we could do without. But uh, yeah, so it's got a very short wing, you can tell. But it also does have substantial body lift. I mean, uh, not like some of the stock parts. But uh, I mean, if they were sized to this size, they have more. Uh, but it has body lift as you would expect from something of its shape. Okay, turning off some engines and rolling. I mean, as it was, this always operated at sort of the bleeding, the bleeding edge of what could be done here. Now we might have gone too steeply. I think we're running out of gas here. So, separation. Okay, execute. So we fell a little bit short this time because I was too steep. But that'll be alright since I felt like last time we went too fast. We will see if this works out for us. It will prevent us from overshooting. We still have enough fuel to make sure that we re-enter properly. I'll cut down on the max stopping time here. Okay, here we go again. And we are in the atmosphere. Hey, 100 kilometers. We are not slowing down yet. It's using a bit of roll and a bit of yaw on the opposite side. Uh, it's still sort of maxing, tending to max out roll. Uh, pitching down is not good either. Mm. Oh, and things are blowing up already. What's up with the procedural wings? How tough are those things? <laughs> okay, well this... well, obviously this is gonna blow up. I mean, that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, this is the payload. Okay, okay. Um, just for a uh, sanity check, we are going to launch it with the B9 procedural wings and see how it goes. 
I mean, maybe maybe it's all messed up now. I don't know. So yeah, let's try the B9 Procedure Wing version. I mean, at least this way we get the new body textures, but of course we still have the procedural wings, and I didn't do all that work to just go back to this, but we'll see. Anyway, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Interestingly, on the these procedural wing surfaces, I never did tell them just to do what they're supposed to do. I have them all on pitch yaw and roll 100 and they're basically the default so maybe I should just change that on the other one I don't know instead of actually configuring them to do the specific thing well depends on whether this works out or not I might also have to take a look at what magic there may be in the B9 procedural wing configuration. I still have to make a mount for it too instead of having the simple regular decoupler for the second stage in payload. I don't know, the dynamics somehow are a little bit different with this. Like this got a little bit less drag or something. It just felt a little bit different going up. I mean, best guess is that somehow the way I did the control surfaces in in Unity and Blender doesn't quite work out the way I thought it would. And it induces a roll. They're somehow imbalanced. Unlike the B9 procedural wings, that's one difference. The B9 procedural wings are placed in symmetry. Whereas the ones I made are not. They're placed individually. And it's looking like it's going to operate the way it normally does. With high g-forces, of course, but... Well, I guess I'll... I would like to land one for once. We are overshooting quite a bit. That's actually the main problem with finding other sites, is the other sites, the pairs tend to be too close, not too far away from each other. Okay, maybe it's alright for me to try to control it now. Maybe. Well, this has been yet another case of why I often resort to B9 procedural wings, instead of trying to make custom wings and control surfaces. I wonder how it would be with just the controls, B9 control surfaces and the new wings. There are a lot of possible variables and things we could change right now. May or may not need more than that, we'll see. Okay, no additional boost back was necessary. We're fizz warping here. I should come out of fizz warp before turning, of course. But there's the runway and we have plenty of extra height here. Okay. Breaks out. And touchdown. Well, the good news is the sanity check works out. The bad news is that definitely means that there's something wrong with what I've got with the new surfaces. So what are we going to do about that? What if I did try to put the wings in symmetry instead of in uh, individually? Uh, well, that, that, see, that, that goes all over the place. Um, hold on. Yeah, that, that's just not right. <laughs> uh, what, whatever's happening here, I mean, this is obviously not how they're supposed to go in symmetry. But how do I make them go in symmetry right? Anyway. 
Yep, so putting them in symmetry is not something... I'm confused. It's not an option right now. I think it's because of where their attachment point is. I think it sort of has to be at... Well, I mean, but the attachment point was in 0, 0, 0 in Blender. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here as far as why they're oriented like this in the first place. See, I mean, if I take it off of the model... Well, should I put Snap on? No, that doesn't do anything. If I take it off of the model, you can see it's oriented the way it ought to be, right? And if we hold and click Snap, it goes on just fine. But as far as surface attach goes... Hmm... Well, I'm gonna have to figure out something, that's for sure. Well, I'll think about this, but the triumphant uh, revamp of the Orion carrier plane obviously has to wait a little bit. Alas. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.